Welcome, my dear students of class 12 to this English class with me, your tutor, Atigno Sekose. Today, we are going to take a look at two topics that is power writing as well as expressing opinion. Now, uh, we are going to take a look at it from the perspective of writing your answers as well as using the language or using whatever you have learned so far into uh, speaking skills. So we have two objectives in mind today and I hope you would keep track of whatever we have learned so far and applied it in, in the long run in your speaking skills as well. So let's first take a look at the topic that is power writing. You would find it on page 11, power writing, page 11. So as you can see under power writing here, uh, you would find that it is written in acronym which is abbreviated It is written in acronym that is power and these letters represent different kinds of things that is to do with your uh, writing skills here. So what do we mean when we say uh, power writing and under P here we are talking about pre-writing before you actually write you prepare. So pre-writing and preparation. In order to save time, I won't be writing everything in detail here as you have your text there. Now, remember in one of our class when we talked about speech drafting, we talked about how we need to gather our thoughts first and make a list of the main key points. So that is what we meant when it says pre-writing or uh, preparation. You first consider whether, what is the objective, you first consider what is the theme, you first consider what is the question for that matter and so on. So all those things are done in the initial section before you write. And that's what we have here. Under O here you have organization. So organization here, what does it mean? Let's say you have made a list of all the points that you wanted to say and now you want, you want to make sure that your points are in sequence. They are uh, connected in terms of the line of thought and the kind of question that is being asked. So in that way you organize your points or your objectives. So whether it is for writing for an invitation or not, whether it is for drafting a speech, it is all the same thing here. When you are asked to draft an invitation or for that matter a notice, what do you usually do? You remember, you try to collect the the main things, the main features that are supposed to go into your notice writing. So you've collected your thoughts there and then you organize what, uh, where is the date supposed to be, where is, where is the issuing authority supposed to be, you organize it in that way. So that's what we do and under organization the same thing applies to whether it is an essay or a speech that you are drafting. Or the paragraphs should be all interconnected so you organize it in that way. Then. The next point here we have is W, that is for writing a draft rough. You are going to draft a rough one. You need to start. If you are thinking that, oh, I don't know how to write one, you know, when it comes to writing, even if we know a lesson very well, the concept very well, we get into trouble when it has to do with writing. Unless you try, whether it is right or wrong, unless you attempt to sit down and draft one, it will not come to you as easily as you uh, would have imagined. So make sure whether it is right or wrong, you draft it out. So that's the next big step that you are supposed to take. Now, the next thing that we have here is E, which is very important. Editing and evaluating. Now, when you write it, sometimes, why do we, uh, why do we find ourselves in a big confusion or why do we not want to write uh, things? That is because we are not clear with the uh, how to go about with your writing. That is one of the main problem here. But the main problem is also to do with, oh, I don't know how to write. The main problem is also to do with uh, how you are not able to apply the, the lessons that we have learned so far, be it in the grammar section or drafting things and so on. That When we are afraid of that, 
or when we are afraid, to be more precise, to afraid of committing mistakes, we do not attempt it at all. So that shouldn't be the case here. So even if you don't know, from the small uh, information that you have gathered, you use that and just make a rough draft and then you need not worry about, oh, am I making these grammar mistakes or not? Is this spelling correct or not? Am I getting all the points correct or not? You need not worry about that. Because if you do that, it will create more confusion in the writing process. So that's why, forget about all those things. Just be clear with what you want to present first and then list it out in that way. Then attempt, sit down and just try to connect your thoughts or your speech draft and so on. And after all is done, what you can do is, now, the first thing that I want to check is, I want to check my grammar. So let's say you check your grammar. I want to check for spelling errors. So let's say you have checked your spelling errors. Now I want to check, now you want to have a bigger look at your work here. Now I want to check whether the flow of thought is correct or not. So that is checked. So what you can do is you can prepare a checklist. I want to, so the, let's say this is your checklist. And you can write down grammar, spellings, uh, line of thought, interconnectedness of the paragraph, uh, the format, if it is to do with your invitations and so on, or notice, you, the format, you want to have a checklist. And after all is done, you want to check. So if it is grammar is uh, checked, you can give a tick. Spelling checked, you give a tick, and that's how you slowly progress into the writing process. So editing and evaluating is very important here. Now, the last one, that is R. This is very important, and I'm sure all your teachers uh, uh, usually advise you to revise your work before you submit your work. So revising, or you can say re-editing, if the, that is required. So this is the last step. So you revised it again, after all is checked, then you revised it again and see how, how it sounds, if you are going to deliver a speech, how, how is it going to sound when you deliver it. If it is to do with invitation, uh, you can consider whether every important information are given there or not and so on. So you revised it and if you have missed out, anything, then you add it. So that's how you go about with the writing process. Now, we have already learned about speech drafting again, but this is also something that you can incorporate into not only your speech writing, but it, you can incorporate it into uh, your essay writing, your paragraph writing, and so on. In fact, if you are able to follow this, you would also be able to attempt your questions and write down your answers, and then you would make a point to revise it and then correct it and so on. So that is what we have here. Now, in, uh, you may find that this writing has nothing to do with the next topic that is expressing opinion, but it is very much the same. If many of us, we have different kinds of um, uh, let's say abilities or in learning language here. Maybe some of us learn it better when we write it. Maybe some of us learn it better when we use it and speak it. So these two things can also go hand in hand, that is in terms of expressing opinion. So now we are going to take a look at that and keeping this noted, I hope you would proceed to the next topic with me that is expressing writing. You would find it on page 79. So the next topic that we have is expressing opinion and you would find it on page 79. So if you can take a look at that, this is a very brief topic that we have here, but it is also very important to your speaking skills. And I hope we would be able to address some of the problems that we have in uh, speaking skills with this topic. So as you can see, in order to save time, I would not be writing the points on the board as such. Uh, please follow your text along with this lecture here. So as you can see, you would find that when we are expressing our opinion, we uh, sometimes, in fact, not everyone expresses things the same way and not everyone would find in a situation where you agree with the other person and so on. In that kind of a situation, if we are not able to, uh, maybe we are reluctant, in fact, reluctant to express our feelings because we do not know how 
to express it or to object to a certain argument and so on. So that is when, in fact, we have also learned about the model auxiliaries, how it is more to do with our feelings. You do not want to project a, a very impolite uh, uh, kind of a personality or language to your listeners or to the, the other person here. So those things need to be considered. And in that kind of a, a situation, again, the context, how would you express yourself better without uh, making any, uh, getting yourself into trouble or without hurting the feelings of the next person? So these are some of the tips that you would find here. So these are some starters. I would just read it out here. I strongly believe that, that is one, it is my opinion that, or in my opinion, or I feel that. So that is how you can put across your opinions and views in a more polite manner. And remember, even in our lesson that is the topic if we have learned that we are also supposed to make room for people's feedbacks and criticism. You know, in a conversation can go disarrayed or can get distorted, all because the person, uh, one person is very headstrong and the other person wants to lay out his or her opinions, uh, his or her opinions uh, in such a way that the other person gets affected. So that kind of a scenario takes place. So. In order to avoid such kind of situation, these are some of the polite starters that you can use. And in fact, I would suggest that you practice using it. Uh, maybe you have uh, already drafted a speech, so you can also incorporate this into your delivery or even in a conversation. Maybe you, let's say, I would suggest in order to build up your speaking skills, and since we are losing a lot of uh, formal education here, I would, I'm sure many of us are not finding ourselves in the context where we are able to use the language. And the language can be learned only when we use it. So it is very important for you to use it. Now you have drafted one a speech, let's say, and I suggest you present it to your parents, and then you can have a discussion. And maybe somebody else would say that, uh, no, I do not agree with the point that you have pointed out, and then you can build up your argument or present it in this manner using these expressing opinion starters, such as, I strongly believe. If it is something that you strongly believe and you do not want to come off as rude to your, uh, to your listeners here, you can point out, I strongly believe that, or in my opinion. So you are making room for the other person's opinion as well. Or I feel that, so that is what you can use. Supposing you find yourself in a situation where, supposing you find yourself in a situation where you are, uh, you you come across a person who is, who is very headstrong and very uh, opinionated, then in that kind of a situation, you let's say you know something that is very much true and you wanted to express that opinion. So in such kind of situation, what you can do is, when I recognize who uh, while I recognize what you have said or what you are saying, I also believe that, see, in that way you are making room for the other person's opinion, at the same time you are expressing yourself. Then, while this is true, that is also can be considered here. If you agree with something that the person had said earlier, uh, maybe partially or if not entirely, let's say, uh, while I agree with what you have said to and then you can cite whatever you agree with. But I feel that, so see, that is how you can build up your conversation. And uh, the next point that we have here is, um, I can't say I agree with the argument made by, see, that is how you can, in a very polite way, you can also present your opinion without actually hurting the other person's feelings. And the next one we have here is, but on the other hand. Now, this is very interesting. It, if you are able to use this in the right context, that means you, you are building up your reasoning skills, your judgmental skills in a very, uh, uh, to, taking it to a very great high level, we can say. Because here you are considering the other person's opinion and views as well. And so you are juxtaposing two ideas, two different ideas. And when we are able to judge things in that way, we are able to come to a greater understanding. So, but on the other hand, that means you, you, you agree with a certain things that, with certain things that the person had mentioned. And yet there is also another situation or idea or concept that you can explore. So you brought those, uh, you bring in those 
the different opposite ideas and that is when you would uh, be able to use but on the other hand that is the case here such and such is true but on the other hand such and such is also happening so see in that way you can build up your conversation you can build up your points of argument and expressing yourself in a more free manner without hurting other people's feelings so these are some of the uh, important skills that you need to inculcate in your speaking skills i'm sure you are getting uh, maybe many of you are able to uh, use the language in terms of writing and texting and so on but when we are using it verbally that is when the that is when the tricky thing arises here so i need you to uh, remember i've already suggested draft a speech or an essay or a paragraph on any or anything that you wanted to write maybe even even if it is a poetry well and good so write one and present it to your audience maybe your family members your friends make it a point to present it verbally that is when you would able to get, uh, understand more into what has gone wrong or what what you could have done better and so on so see that is how you can do it and then try to have a discussion on what you have just uh, presented and when you are uh, given certain other opinions you can also try to incorporate all these into your conversation so that would really help you inculcate some of the important speaking skills here now when we say speaking skills we are not only talking about using the grammar correctly and uh, and so on we a lot of things has to be considered when we are speaking for instance we have been talking so much about the context here so the context becomes very important what kind of a person you are referring to what kind of an issue you are addressing what kind of a topic you are presenting all these kinds of things needs to be considered so when you find yourself in that kind of a real situation it is more effective when you applied all these things remember uh, when we go through the topics and if you just simply read it peruse it or if you just simply try to write one it is uh, all well and good like i said but the real trouble arises when we are using it and many of us find ourselves unable to use the language that is english because we are uh, sometimes we are not comfortable with it but i'm telling you you know all the concepts you know all the grammatical rules that we have discussed you have so much materials in terms of the prose and poetry sections there so i'm sure by now you are able to have a lot of things that you can express so take time to express it remember language can be inculcated or language can be learned only when we use it in terms of writing and speaking and more so when we use it in speaking so make a point to use it and do not be afraid to make mistakes when you are speaking because that is bound to happen language english language is not our native language but that does not mean that we should be afraid of it or that does not mean that we should stop using it because it is very important and relevant to our education so that's how i would uh, that's why i would suggest that do not be afraid in using it make mistakes and that's how you learned so uh, the more mistakes you make the more you are learning so do not be afraid use it and enjoy using it and correcting it yourself thank you all very much for joining me